If you think getting away from seven lightning strikes alive and coming back from a life-threatening coma and winning the lottery are next to impossible, think again. Here are 10 of the luckiest people that ever escaped death. Number 10, John Babacombe Lee. This is one of the luckiest escapes I know of in history. Meet John Babacombe Lee. He is a convicted criminal, and his story will literally make you feel how mundane our lives really are. It was a dark day during the winter of 1884, and gruesome murder took place in Babacombe Bay, England, at the house of Miss Emma Keese. Miss Emma was brutally murdered with an axe, and her house was burned down after that. Shortly afterward, police arrested and eventually convicted John Lee for the horrible murder. But here is the catch. There was no clear evidence that showed beyond a reasonable doubt that he committed this crime in the first place. He was arrested all because he was the only man in the household and since he had a bad reputation. Can you imagine? However, on the day of his hanging, one of the most unusual things that ever happened in history happened. They tried to execute him three times, and in all of those times, the attempts failed. The trap door wouldn't open, and the lever mechanism broke. Later, the authorities canceled his death sentence, and John went down in history as one of the luckiest men to ever live. And that's not all. After he was released, he went to the United States of America, and lived until he was 80 years old. Impressive, isn't it? Number 9. Zuleika Kadkoda. The Middle East, and particularly many of the Islamic nations there, are known for their notorious and inhumane punishments. Some of these so-called crimes are not even considered crimes in many liberal nations. One such thing is adultery, and this story is about a woman who survived one of the most horrible ways to cross over to the other side. A young, 20-year-old Iranian girl, Zuleika Kadkoda, was charged with adultery and was sentenced to death in 1997. And how was this death sentence to be carried out? You wouldn't believe me. By stoning her to death. Yes, by a mob of angry villagers. What a rule of law over there. And guess what? It is very common over there even today. Those stories aren't just make-believe. Now, stoning to death is only a part of this horrendous punishment. First, they bury you up to the waist and then start pelting you with heavy rocks. Be thankful you are not over there. The poor girl went through a great ordeal and after storming her with numerous stones, everyone thought that she was dead. But to everyone's surprise, she had survived. They thought it was a miracle of God. And luckily, the girl recovered and even received a pardon. Number 8. Jim Thompson The next one here is a true American hero and a symbol of hope that inspired the nation and proof that the will to survive can overcome even death. Meet Colonel Floyd James Thompson, or Jim Thompson. And believe me when I say this, his incredible journey of survival is almost like a story straight out of a fictional novel. He went to Vietnam in 1963 to serve six months over there and didn't even know about the country before that. A year later, on March 26th, while he was on an observation plane, the plane was shot down by the Viet Cong and Jim was captured. And now comes the part you'll find to be simply unbelievable. The very next day, an army officer informed his pregnant wife about his disappearance. Because of the trauma of that news, she went into labor and gave birth to their son that evening. But here is the thing, the baby would not see his father for the next nine years. Yes. Jim spent nine years, or 3,278 days, as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. And his time as a prisoner of war was a vacation in hell itself. He was brutally tortured, starved, humiliated, and even isolated from other American prisoners. But after going through all that, Jim still managed to survive and stay alive. He was released in 1973 at the end of the Vietnam War. He came home to his family as a hero, and as the only U.S. veteran to spend such a long time under enemy captivity and survive. Do you know anyone who survived being a prisoner of war? What was their story? Tell me about it in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to The Biggest, if you haven't already, for more amazing videos just like this one. Number 7. Jose Salvador Alvarenga that story was impressive and seemed almost impossible, wasn't it? And if you think that was impossible, listen to this amazing story of a narrow escape from death. 
here is someone who was shipwrecked and made it out alive. And not just alive, he kept himself alive for 13 months while floating on the Pacific Ocean. Don't believe me, right? See for yourself. Jose Salvador was a Salvadorian fisherman, perhaps the unluckiest fisherman in El Salvador. One fine day, he and a friend went out to fish in the deep ocean. But little did they know about the fate that awaited them on that day. Soon after departing, bad weather and a ravaging storm hit them, and the radio connection, electronics, and even the boat they were in were badly damaged. Soon, the duo found themselves drifting further into the Pacific and were lost completely. Four months later, Jose's travel partner, Cordoba, died of starvation, and Jose was all alone in the middle of nowhere, drifting further away and drifting slowly into insanity. He kept talking with the corpse of his dead friend, and after 14 months, he finally spotted a tiny island near the Marshall Islands. Despite being awfully weak physically, he swam towards it. He was rescued by a couple on that island. Aren't you curious about what he ate and drank during his voyage? This one will shock you. He kept eating raw fish, small birds and turtles, and he drank rainwater. When there wasn't enough, he drank his own urine. He is still doing well today with his family. In the beginning, he was the unluckiest fisherman in history. Today, he is the luckiest fisherman that ever lived. His story of surviving after drifting across the Pacific is a tale that will always be remembered. Number 6. Julian Kepke Plane crashes are among the deadliest disasters in the world. Unlike in a car crash or a ship sinking, the chances of survival in a serious plane crash are almost zero, and not many have been that lucky. But hey, these are the luckiest people of all time. Julianne Kepke is one of them, as the aircraft she was traveling fell almost two miles and crashed into the dense Peruvian Amazon. She was the sole survivor. No other passenger made it out alive. And not just that, she survived 10 days in the deep rainforest and still managed to keep her sanity and her life. She is 66 years old now and doing very well today. I've heard that cats have nine lives and I'm convinced that Julianne has more. Number five, Truman Duncan. Now take a look at yourself. All of your body is there intact, right? Legs, arms, torso, and all. Wonderful. Now take a deep breath and imagine a train ran over you and you were left with only half of your body. Do you think you would be alive if that happened? I don't think I would make it. But here is something you will never believe. There is someone who experienced exactly that. And yes, still managed to survive. Feels like a scene out of a horror movie, right? Just like always, Truman Duncan was doing his job at the railway. While he was on a moving rail car, suddenly he slipped and fell right in front of the train onto the railway. The poor man tried so hard to outrun and get out of the way, but luck had left him at that time. So, here is the scene. He's down on the rail line, the rail car is moving forward, and there is no way to stop it. Could you imagine the horrific scene that follows? He was struck and dragged by the train for 75 feet, and his body was cut into two halves. And guess what? The man was conscious and awake all the time. And you wouldn't believe me, but even after missing his lower half, it was Truman himself who called 911 for help from his cell phone. And he waited 45 minutes until medical aid arrived. That's a lot of miracles in a row. No wonder he is dubbed the Miracle Man. See, his story shows that you can live after losing many things relationships, family, job, and of course, even half of yourself. There's some type of miracle or someone looking out for you at all times. Number four, Roy Sullivan. Many say that lightning never strikes the same place twice. I don't really know since I've never seen that, but I do know for sure that lightning can strike the same person seven times. Not just that, I know for sure that some people can even survive such a bizarre oddity. Meet Roy Sullivan, who's nicknamed the Human Lightning Rod. And yes, this was the lucky devil I was talking about. Between 1942 and 1977, Roy got struck by lightning seven times, and he survived all of them. I don't think even a cat could get that lucky with their nine lives. And guess what? Even his wife got struck by lightning once, and came out unharmed. Who says luck is not contagious? Number three, Anatoly Borgoski. 
Now this might sound like something straight out of science fiction, but do you know that there is a Russian physicist who got hit by a supercharged proton beam from a particle accelerator? A supercharged proton beam is actually a high energy form of radiation. I'm no scientist, but here is something I know for sure. This device is so super fast and lethal to a human that if you get hit with it, it will go through you and you will probably die. But Anatoly Burgoski, a Russian physicist, faced one such horrible experience. Despite the predictions of all medical experts who unanimously agreed that his time was over, he managed to survive. While trying to fix a malfunction in the particle accelerator, the proton beam passed through his head, barely missing his eye and brain. He said he saw a light brighter than a thousand suns and didn't feel a thing even after the accident and the fatal head wounds. Somehow he didn't perish, he recovered despite experiencing such an acute blast of energy. And guess what? After a lengthy and miraculous recovery, he even completed his PhD and continued to work as a particle physicist. Number 2. Bill Morgan We all know winning the lottery is once in a lifetime luck for anyone. And many of us will never get that lucky. But would you believe me if I told you that there is a man who was lucky enough to come back to life after a fatal accident and then won the lottery, not just once, but twice. Bill Morgan was a truck driver from Australia. On the unluckiest day of his life, he was involved in a deadly crash while driving his truck. He survived the crash, but soon after had a heart attack as a result of the trauma. He was rushed into the emergency ward, but soon after, his heart stopped beating. Why? Because of an allergic reaction to a drug that was given to him. He was put under life support, but all the doctors were convinced that it was over for him. How unlucky can a man get? But miraculously, after being clinically dead for almost two weeks, Bill was revived. That surely is an impossible thing, right? But his luck got even better. Twelve days after that, one day, Bill woke up and made a complete recovery. How lucky can a man get? Well, that surely was not the end of his luck. Shortly thereafter, Bill bought a scratch-off ticket that won him a car that was worth almost $17,000. Soon after that, the tale of Bill's miraculous luck got the attention of local media. And this is where things got strangely lucky. While filming a reenactment of his lottery win, Bill tried his luck again on a scratch-off ticket. And guess what? While on air, live, he won the lottery and took home a massive $250,000. Yes, that's right, right on live television. That is incredible. Number one, the ultimate freak accident. Usually when you are on a highway, you mostly meet other vehicles, right? One man in China met with something super crazy that almost killed him the way it would in a Hollywood movie. Meet Mr. Shang. A truck loaded with industrial equipment lost control and some of its load rolled onto the highway. Among them were several huge cutting blades. They went on rolling quickly down the road, and guess what? They ended up in a collision with Shang's car that was driving in a different lane. But luckily, he was able to steer the vehicle without having a major collision. The blades destroyed the front of his car, and if there had even been a slight difference, the blades would have cleaved Shang in half from head to toe. Now that sounds like a scene straight from the movie Final Destination, don't you think? And that is all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this, and do share in the comments if you've had any death-defying luck in your life. Don't forget to subscribe to The Biggest, hit that bell button, and you can guarantee that you'll get informed every single week. See you next time.